Hi everybody, it's Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're going to compare the Audio Engine HD3 and the Audio Engine A2 Plus desktop speakers so that we can have a better understanding of which one to choose depending on their features, our preference, and budget. I say we because I'm actually picking between these two to replace my Edifier R1280 dB bookshelf speakers and I want to share that experience with you. With that being said, Let's get into it. Alright guys, full disclaimer, I got these two speakers as a review sample from Digital Walker, which now carries Audio Engine products here in the Philippines. And like I said, I'm only going to choose one to use as my main steer speakers for my desk setup. So let's start with the unboxing experience and see how they differ in terms of the packaging and package contents. Okay, so the Audio Engine HD3 comes in the square box with some image preview of the product around it, including the backside where we can have a preview of its input and output ports. Upon opening the box, the first thing that you'll notice is a couple of pouches, and underneath the styrofoam, we have the left and right speakers, also protected by the same soft microfiber pouch. Inside the box, we also have a couple of silica gels to keep moisture in check, and plastic that houses the paperwork, and the detachable antenna. I really appreciate the soft microfiber pouches for the accessories. It gives you that premium feels the Audio Engine brand is known for. Inside this first pouch, we have a bunch of cables. We have the 2 meters 16 AWG speaker wire, the 1.5 meter micro USB cable, a 1.5 millimeter audio cable, and the cord for the AC adapter. Inside the second accessory pouch, we just have the AC power adapter itself. As you can tell, the packaging alone gives you the feeling that Audio Engine really puts an effort when it comes to the attention to detail for their products. So right here, we have the right side of the Audio Engine HD3. And at first look and touch, my gosh, it actually packs some decent weight to it. And the quality feels really robust. Here in front, we have the 2.75 inch Aramid fiber woofers, the 0.75 inch silk dome tweeters, a brushed aluminum accent design right here with an Audio Engine logo, and a small base port lining here at the bottom. Around the top and sides of the speaker, we don't have anything except for this nice walnut finish for this particular variant. And here at the bottom, we have a massive rubber padding. And lastly, at the back, we just have the ports for the speaker cable connecting this to the main left side speaker. Speaking of the main left side speaker, let's check it out. Oh, by the way, the Audio Engine HD3 also comes with a magnetic front mesh cover to protect the fragile woofer and tweeter if you're into that. But let's be honest, it looks way better without this, right? Okay, so here's the main left side speaker, which pretty much has the same design, except that on this side, we have the volume knob that also doubles as the power switch, a 3.5mm headphone out, and the Bluetooth indicator and pairing button. At the back, we have pretty much all the input and output ports for the speaker. First, we have the antenna port, which is a good indication that the Bluetooth reception for the speaker, in theory, should be better compared to those who just have a built-in antenna. The Audio Engine HD3 actually supports APTX HD, which is one significant advantage over the A2 Plus, but more on that later. Next, we have the micro USB port, wherein you can take advantage of the 24 bit input depth and the 48 kHz sample rate. We also have here a physical switch between normal and reduced bass, just in case you want to use a dedicated subwoofer. Next to that is the power port, and right here we have the stereo RCA input and output ports, the ports or connectors for the speaker cable going to the passive right speaker and a 3.5mm input port. Now, I'll pop the complete specifications of the Audio Engine HD3 so that you can check it out, but later, I'll show this again in comparison with the Audio Engine A2+. Plus. Overall, I really like the design and build quality of the Audio Engine HD3 and everything it has to offer in terms of features and input and output ports, but before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at the Audio Engine A2 Plus first. Now, the Audio Engine A2 Plus comes with a rectangular box with pretty much the same design details as the HD3. Around the box, we just have some image previews, and upon opening the box, it's basically the same. The first thing you'll notice is a couple of accessory pouches with the same microfiber cloth material. Underneath the styrofoam are the left and right speakers, and again, we have a couple of silica gels and a plastic that houses the paperwork, but this time, we don't have a detachable antenna, so that's already one difference. Inside the first accessory pouch, we have the cables. We have the same 1.5 meter micro USB cable and the 1.5 meter audio cables. But the speaker cable, although it's the same 2 meter 16 AWG cable, the shielding and connector at the end are entirely different. I would say though that they function pretty much the same. It's just that the cable on the HD3 is easier to plug in. 
And lastly, for this pouch, we have the AC adapter cable. As for the second pouch, as you might have guessed already, we just have the AC power adapter, which is basically the same as what we have on the Audio Engine HD3. So in terms of the accessories, the only difference is that we don't have an external antenna and that the speaker cable is different on the A2+. Plus. Now let's take a look at the Audio Engine A2+. Plus. It is also well protected by the same microfiber pouch and a thin foam cover. At first look in touch, while the woofer, tweeter, and bass port looks exactly the same with the Audio Engine HD3, same size and specifications by the way, the rest is quite different. What we have here is the high gloss white variant, which in my opinion, even though I'm not a fan of glossy finish, is still absolutely clean. We also have the same rubber padding at the bottom, but the overall form factor is noticeably smaller than the HD3. Here at the back, since this is the right side speaker, we only have the speaker cable connector. The build quality is also very good with a thick enclosure and a good amount of weight to it. Now compared to the Audio Engine HD3, the left and right speakers of the Audio Engine A2 Plus has the same front design which makes for a very minimal and clean look on any desk setup. I've seen a lot of people rocking the A2 Plus on their desk setup and now I understand why. Because this speaker really looks good aesthetically and should fit any type of setup or theme especially those who are looking for a minimalist look. Now here at the back, we'll see pretty much all its differences compared to the Audio Engine HD3. First, instead of in front, we have the volume knob and the Bluetooth pairing button here at the back, which to be honest is kind of weird placement, but I guess they really want to keep that minimalist design in front. Obviously, we don't have an external antenna here, and that this speaker only supports the standard APTX instead of the APTX HD on the HD3. We also have here the USB input port that supports 16-bit compared to the 24-bit of the HD3. Aside from that, the rest is pretty much the same. We have the 3.5mm input port, the power port, the RCA ports, and the speaker ports. Now, here are both the Audio Engine HD3 and the Audio Engine A2 Plus side by side so that you can have an idea of how they differ in terms of their design, size, and form factor. I'll also pop their specifications side by side so that you can compare at a quick glance and probably take a screenshot if you want, but essentially, these are their significant differences. Now, in terms of audio quality, I'm not an audiophile, so honestly, I'm not that qualified to give you technical analysis, but judging by my testing and comparisons, which by the way, I will let you listen to later, both sound really good and surprisingly loud, especially given their relatively tiny form factor. Like, I'm not even exaggerating, but both can get really loud without much distortion and even at only 40%, the volume level is already enough to enjoy a comfortable listening experience. But what really strikes me the most is the clarity and fullness of the sound coming from the speakers, especially the Audio Engine HD3, which in my opinion sounds a bit better compared to the Audio Engine A2+. Honestly, before I had these Audio Engine speakers, I thought I'm already okay with my Edifier R1280DB budget bookshelf speakers, but I was blown away by how much better these Audio Engine speakers are. And ultimately, I think I'm going to choose the Audio Engine HD3 because not only it sounds really good, but it also fits my desk setup quite perfect with this walnut aesthetic. So yeah. Now, here's a mandatory sound test and comparison between the Audio Engine HD3 and A2+. Plus. And I'm also going to throw in the Edifier R1280DB so that you can have a better understanding of what I was talking about earlier. Now, of course, it goes without saying that this test is by far not the best way to showcase how the speaker sounds in reality because obviously, you're going to listen to this using your own audio device with an entirely different sound signature. Not to mention the compression going through YouTube, but I hope you can still get at least an idea how they differ from each other, so let's get into it.
much to the poltergeist To the hold on a love but it's frost and ice time Much but a light from a falling sky Fly to the forces above us like Keep holding on to this present time Inspired by the ones that were left behind us Fell for the light of a foreign sky Flying to the forces above this light And there you have it guys, it's worth noting that the sound quality of these speakers is way better when connected via the USB input interface compared to when being used via Bluetooth. And of course, APTX and APTX HD compatibility entirely depend on your source device, so yeah. All in all, if you have the budget and you like the design and features of the Audio Engine HD3, then definitely it is the way to go. Otherwise, the Audio Engine A2 Plus is also a pretty solid option, especially if you're going after a more minimalist look. At the end of the day, I can honestly say that even though these speakers are quite expensive, you're going to get what you pay for with this. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Digital Walker for allowing me to experience these awesome speakers. You can get these from the links below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.